Welcome to the Elden Conspiracy. The history of the lands between is a murky expanse of disjointed facts, knitted together only by our own powers of interpretation. In this video, I will attempt to detail the history of the Newman, a looming presence, in the overall story of Elden Ring. The Newman show up first as one of the appearance templates when you create a new character. Here, we read they are long-lived yet seldom born. Many lore hunters have likened them to elves of other fantasy worlds. But that they are descendants makes it clear that the Newman can mate with other humanoids from the lands between and elsewhere. We learn later that the Newman are descended from denizens of another world. This is fascinating in several respects. In order to interpret this text, we would have to understand the cosmology of the universe of Elden Ring. And anyone who's looked into this knows that the universe depicted is very unlike our own. Stars are conscious beings who can control gravity, and to a certain extent alter the course of fate. We see evidence of people coming to the lands between by ship, but the tarnished arrive through a process of reincarnation. The moon, or moons, just show up whenever they feel like it. So the idea that there are planets and solar systems, and that the Newman came from another planet, just goes out the window. The other character templates describe areas outside the lands between, such as the Badlands, the Land of Reeds, or the Land of Ancient Dragons, as if they are distant continents. The Land of the Newman could simply be another place accessible in a similar way. Yet I think the game's insistence on mentioning the Newman's otherworldly nature whenever they are brought up makes me think the Newman's homeland is special in some important way. Also, their long life. As it turns out, most of the nobility and important figures, mainly women, turn out to be Newman or have some distant relation. Let's start with Marika. She is described as Newman. This would make the Golden Line and other children of Marika Newman descendants. The Black Knife assassins are also Newman women, with close ties to Marika herself. Nobility in the lands between is associated with Newman blood, which as we know contributes somehow to long life. In Roger's dialogue, both the assassins and Marika herself are described as descendants of the Eternal, as in Eternal Cities, which is where we go next in search of evidence. The Eternal Cities present us with enough questions and ambiguities to cover multiple hours of video. Suffice to say, this subject alone has inspired probably the most out-there theories, but I'd like to dispense with these at the outset. The Eternal Cities are not the spirit world, they are not another plane of existence, and they are not the land of the Newman. But the Newman did live there. The landmass on which the old ruins and the eternal cities stand used to be on the surface of the lands between, or at least exposed to the sky. In Liurnia, we can see columns and statues of old civilization on the surface. This area is also inhabited by ancestral followers, similar to what we see in the underground. This indicates that the old dynasty once lived here. The terrain and flora of the consecrated snowfield are very similar to those of the ancestral woods. This area is at lower level than the mountaintops of the giants themselves, almost as if it should have shared the same fate as the eternal cities. We even see the same lightning wisps in the ancestral followers themselves, also crabs, also bears. Many of the same animals appear in both places. Given these similarities of flora and fauna between the underground and the surface, we have to conclude that these were once one place, and that the Ainsel and Siofra river regions were either transported underground or covered up. Having gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the Newman. In the nameless Eternal City, one can find a cave among the tree roots near the southern edge. The ants with the inflated abdomens will drop Newman runes if killed, and do not respawn. Does this mean the Newman were giant ants all along? Many lore hunters have concluded that the reason they drop Newman runes is because they have been feeding on corpses which have made their way into the cave via the river. We can also say that the original inhabitants of the Nameless Eternal City were Newman or had Newman blood. Sadly, none of the denizens remain to confirm our suspicions. The city has been destroyed as if it has been bombarded from above. Whenever the Eternal Cities are mentioned in item descriptions or dialogue, it is usually singular, THE Eternal City. The names Noxtella and Nokron are not mentioned until we meet E.G. on Ronnie's questline. I believe the Eternal City referred to in the lore is THE Nameless Eternal City. 
What this also suggests is that the twin eternal cities are unknown. The region around the nameless eternal city contains the fountainhead of the two rivers Ainsel and Siofra, and it appears that the Newmen put their dead in stone coffins and send them down both rivers. In both river regions, we can find these coffins from the nameless eternal city. These ants feasting on a pile of corpses in Ainsel River drop Newman runes, similar to the ones elsewhere. So these Newman corpses all likely came from the nameless eternal city. But imagine for a moment that some Newman decided to slip into some coffins, not because they were dead, but because they wanted to escape the ruined city. This, I believe, is part of the origin of the twin cities of Nokron and Noxtella. They don't look as ruined as the nameless city because they were built after its destruction, but the architectural similarities are clear. I believe the Nox are descended from the Newman of the Eternal City, who escaped downriver when it was destroyed. So we've established connections between the Nox of today and the ancient Newman. But there are more questions to answer. The Nox were not alone in this. When they followed the Ainsel and Siofra rivers, they encountered the Old Dynasty. The Old Ruins tend to be older and much more ruined than the Nox cities, so I think we must conclude that they were here before the Nox. Some people believe that the Old developed into the Nox, but I think the complete lack of architectural similarities fails to bear this out. The people of this civilization recorded their history in the form of carvings. This first scene, found on some tablets and reliefs, shows a series of oddly shaped objects. This can be interpreted as many things, among them ships, or perhaps coffins. The next few scenes show people interacting with trees. This could be the old people first encountering the practice of tree worship and tree cultivation. While these two civilizations remain distinct, there is evidence that they had good relations, as we see with the cemetery in Nokron, which shows old designs on the gravestones. We can tell the Ol had a firm grasp on astrology, as we can see from the calendars and their access to meteorites. We don't know if they learned astrology from the Newman, but their statues prominently display the practice of tree worship. On the Ol tablets, the middle scenes always show cultivation of magical vegetation. We can say the Newman from the Nameless Eternal Cities brought the practice of tree worship to the Ol. Due to this association on the tablets and the reliefs, these same reliefs show up in larger form in the Grand Cloister. This brings up a vital question. If the Newman from the Nameless Eternal City brought tree worship to the Ol, why did they then become the Nox, who worshipped the stars to the exclusion of anything tree-related? There isn't any clear answer, but we must point out that there is no trace of the original inhabitants of the Ol dynasty, whether they were the ancestral worshippers or perhaps the zombies near Mogwin Palace. It's possible they all decided to go topside. Remember that the areas initially accessible through the two deep wells only allow us to explore Old Dynasty. In order to get to the heart of either Eternal City, you must go through Ronnie's questline or go beneath the sewers of Landau. So we can say that the Eternal Cities and the Nox themselves are sealed underground, or at least try to keep themselves hidden. There is no question that the Nox who inhabit the twin Eternal Cities are the ones who built them. So now would probably be a good time to talk about why they were banished underground in the first place. The descriptions of Nox attire talk about them incurring the ire of the greater will. If we return to Rane's questline, we get a likely candidate for the cause of this ire. The Finger Slayer Blade is able to slay vassals of the greater will. So we can say the reason for Nox's banishment was some treasonous act which involved the Finger Slayer Blade. But the word treason is important here. This suggests some breach or portrayal of a prior agreement, as if the Newman had some prior covenant with the Greater Will, which some portion of them chose to betray. All this time I've been talking like the entire Newman civilization was sent underground, but I don't believe this is the case. I believe the banishment of the Nox came as the culmination of an ideological split between two factions within Newman culture those who worshipped and cultivated the sacred trees, and those who practiced astrology. It was these astrologer Newman who were banished underground, while the tree worshippers who kept their covenant with the greater will were spared. This split in Newman culture can be seen in two different but at the same time similar architectural styles of the above ground and underground cities. Lower Landell, Ordna, and Celia are examples of this tree worshipping Newman style and this is the group where Marika and the Erdtree nobility come from. 
and also the perfumers. The perfumers and their omen killer fanatics are very likely the modern remnants of the ancient tree-worshipping Newman culture, now centered in Landell. Their headdress is very similar to the Nox. Neither group uses magic, but instead a kind of alchemy. So the similarities are there. The perfumers are concentrated in Landell, the Erdtree capital, and are all royalty. The highest areas of the city show very overt signs that they are populated by perfumers. We even see the ballista bolt heads used in the story trailer against the invading army in some of these rooms. Perfumers led the armies of Landell during the Shattering and are the direct descendants of their ancient Newman forebears. And this is the culture from which Merica arose. The fixation on trees and their sacredness, their association with life itself, leads me to believe that the Newman life cycle, long lived yet seldom born, is somewhat dependent on the trees themselves. We see many characters identified as trees, and the more identified with the sacred trees they are, the more human or complete they are said to be. This is why the Nox turned to studying Silver Tears. There are representations of flowers and plants in many places in the Nox cities. Whether by choice or not, the Nox do not worship or cultivate sacred trees in the post-shattering world of today. Instead, they try to create artificial life, hoping that one would become their Lord of Night. But to say that the Nox were banished while the tree worshippers stayed above is far too simple. As we see in Celia, as well as all over Liernia, the Nox would go on to influence life on the surface from afar. When we look at the cultures of Liernia, we see aspects of both the old civilization and the Nox. This carving, which appears on the four belfries, is clearly inspired by the figure hewn in stone by the old dynasty. The glintstone crowns also bear a resemblance to the old statue. So we have some slight evidence that the old dynasty developed into the astrologers, then the sorcerers we know today. Probably the biggest clue is the sigil used in the claymen's oracle bubble spells, which is the same as the Carrion Glint Blade's school of sorcery. The Nox also had their influence. We hear in Noxtella of a black moon, which once shone over the Eternal City. And today, the Carrion royal family carries on the tradition of moon worship. And while the Nox created artificial life, the two generations of Albinorix attest to a similar fixation the Liernian cultures have on created life forms. First generation Albinorix worked as servants of the Carrion Royals, as we see with Pythia. There is also this side area in Carrion Manor containing many Albinorix sorcerers. Like the Nox, the preceptors of the Carrion Dynasty pursue puppetry through the use of starlight shards. Rani's questline culminates in her finding a Lord of Night, completing the goal that the Nox started long ago. So I think it is clear that the people of Liernia are heirs to the legacy of the underground cultures, the Old Dynasty and the Nox. But there is still no clear reason why the Nox and the Ol in ancient times abandoned tree worship in favor of astrology. In the distant past, it is possible that both these practices were part of the Newman religion and did not conflict. Perhaps through unknown circumstances they were forced to turn to astrology, or perhaps they learned something about the Erd tree to which they became opposed. In both the Siafra and Einsel River regions, we see old ruins centered on a biological catastrophe. In one case, scarlet rot, in the other, the cessblood of the formless mother. Both can be seen as a kind of spore or virus. Both are examples of a disease which sprang up in a culture who venerated the practice of sacred tree worship. Perhaps this isn't a coincidence. I speculate that these disasters happened as a result of the old dynasty delving too deep into the practice of sacred tree cultivation. That these forces were created or cultivated like the Erd tree was in ancient times, but with very different outcomes. That the Ul could not properly control the power they had borrowed from the Newman. Of course there is no lore which confirms or denies these suspicions, but the fact that both Scarlet Rot and the Susblood are centered on old dynasty locations must mean something. The marriage between Rinala and Radagon, representing the moon and the Erd tree respectively, in some ways mended the split in the ancient Newman culture, though they are countless years removed from their Newman ancestors. It should be clear from all of this, through the appearance of the nameless Eternal City, the history of the Newman, and the carvings of the old dynasty, that the practice of cultivating and worshipping sacred trees is far more ancient than the Erd tree itself. 
While the Newman have some unexplained, inextricable connection to the sacred trees, we see evidence of sacred tree cultivation in other places, namely Ferrum Azula. This symbol, prominently displayed on the beast graves in Ferrum Azula and in Grail's Dragon Barrow, is very similar to the one shown on the Old Dynasty tablet, which represents a kind of stylized magical tree or plant. While I don't think these two cultures have any direct connection, this kind of thing makes you wonder. It's possible the tree-worshipping Newman, who avoided the fate of their Nox cousins, introduced the practice of sacred tree cultivation to Ferrum Azala. And while Merica herself is firmly rooted in the Newman nobility of Landell, she does have some connection to the floating city. Because as an Empyrean, her shadow Malekith is very clearly a denizen of Ferrum Azala having taken on the role of beast clergyman. So what does it mean that Merica, a descendant of the Eternal and queen of the lands between, an origin which doesn't in itself hint at any connection to Faram Azula, have a shadow and half-brother, a part of her very being, who is a beast man of Faram Azula? It's doubly strange when we hear elsewhere that an Empyrean's shadow is created by the fingers and befriends the young Empyrean in their youth. Going down this speculation rabbit hole is beyond the scope of this video. Suffice to say, the influence of the Newman is felt everywhere, and it's possible we've only scratched the surface of their voluminous history. This has been the Elden Conspiracy, signing out.